well, it is on the surface a fan song, uh -huh. and I am a fan. I will declare that right up front. Um, after he could not attend any of the reunion shows, and at that point, I had been in contact with his manager. Uh, who blew me away one day by sending me a message online saying that he saw that I had listed Pollard and GBV as some of my great musical loves. And he told me that Robert was a huge fan of Big Dipper, which blew me away because I thought that they were too cool and too hip, too indie, um, to really care about a band like Big Dipper that went to a major and screwed everything up. Um, but it turns out he's a huge fan, and so after the reunion shows, uh, he came here right across the street over at the Paradise with Boston Spaceships, uh -huh. and that was my first meeting. Were you at the I show? Think I saw yeah, it, too, yeah, it was a fun show. And uh, so we met for the first time. I was very nervous because he is absolutely my favorite rock songwriter, and. Uh, so we had a, a wonderful conversation and he told me with a straight face, he said, Big Dipper is the 20th best rock band of all time. <laughs> which I, I have to go on the record as saying I completely disagree with. I can think of at least 100 or maybe 150 bands that are better than Big Dipper, but maybe that's my humility speaking. <laughs> and uh, so, of course, I had to know what band was the, uh, not number 19 on the list, and without any sense of irony or self-consciousness and without any pause, he said, T-Rex. And I'm like, oh, now, wait a minute. I think we're better than T-Rex, but okay, fine. That's your list. That's that's fine. I never found out who the other bands on the list were or how extensive the, the list was. Um, so anyway, we struck up a friendship, and I thought, wow, this would be really cool if he would collaborate with me or with Big Dipper or whomever. And at first, he was doing so much that it, it didn't really work out. And then one day, I got a, a, a message from his manager saying, yeah, he'd, he'd like to do a collaboration collaboration with you. So I finished up a group of songs that I had written that I didn't think were right for Big Dipper, uh, but would be right for him. And it was this amazing process. I thought that I would be recording all the music and then going to Ohio and we would do vocals together. But he didn't want to do it that way. He said, do two track stereo mixes or, or just mixes of, of um, all the songs. Send them to me and I'll do the vocals out there. And uh, I was a little disappointed at first because I thought it'd be fun to collaborate in person and work on the vocals together, maybe have me do some background vocals. And um, that's not how we did it. So I sent all the, the mixes out there, stereo mixes, and he had his engineer out there record the vocals. And I got a package in the mail one day, and I knew what it was. And you know, I opened it up. I was trembling. I didn't know what to expect because I, I hadn't heard any of his lyrics or melodies. And uh, I put the CD in my player, and I couldn't believe what I heard. Uh, he really did amazing things with those songs. I, I liked the songs, just I liked the music, and I was proud of what I was able to contribute. But I had no idea he'd be able to take these songs in the amazing directions he did. And that was just a great, great experience. Um, different from Big Dipper in a lot of ways, but in some ways very consistent with Big Dipper. I'd sent him these crazy prog and psychedelic ideas. He didn't want to do those. He wanted to do the pop tunes, uh -huh. um, which is fine. It was great. It worked out really well. I hope we can do another one, but we'll see. Are there any of the songs about how Big Dipper is also? Uh, you know, I'm expecting him to write that song any day now, right? Yeah. We need some love coming back from Dayton, Ohio.